Welcome back on the AM show. We start the big stories on the labor front and government, as we know, is set to meet striking tertiary workers on the first day of February, the third, well, Thursday uh, in this week. The meeting is expected to address the concerns that have led to an industrial action by these unions. We can talk about the Senior Staff Teachers and Educational Workers Union, the Ghana Association of University Administrators of the University of Ghana, and more. Well, we'll be getting into this discussion shortly as we host our guests. Isaac Donko is National Chairman, University Senior Staff Association. He joins the conversation. Mr. Donko, good morning to you. Good morning, my brother. Thank you for joining the conversation. Uh, what is the latest? Of course, we do know that you're going to be having some encounter with government, uh, some negotiation that is coming up on Thursday. But so far, what is the picture as far as uh, your outfit is concerned, the University Senior Staff Association? Okay, my brother, thank you for having me. Yeah, the latest is that uh, Senior Staff Association of Public Universities are still on strike. We are still on strike. That's the latest. We may someone. You are someone to. Well, when you say you are still on site, what do you mean? Come again. You say you are still on site. We oh, are on still strike. On strike. Right. I can't hear you so well. So, all right. Oh, sorry. I'm driving. So forgive me. All right. Please go ahead. Yes. Yeah, good. Is it okay now? It's better. Yeah. We are still on strike. You were someone to meet the National Labour Commission uh, last week, last week on NC. And they were of the view that we should suspend our strike and attend to government engagement. The government is meeting us on the 1st of February 2024. That says they can So they are uh, thinking that because government is inviting us for a meeting, we should try and call off or suspend the strike and engage government. That is what happened between us and the National Labour Commission. Right. So, so after that directive by the NLC, have you indeed suspended your strike? I mean, is there any action uh, from your members, even as you await engaging with government? Unfortunately, as a national chairman, who also doubles as a spokesperson for the community, I don't have powers of my own. I take my powers from my neck. We recently had a neck meeting. You know, organizing another net meeting takes a lot of resources from the society. So we have to meet as net and decide whether to call it off or not to call it off. So we are making plans to have a meeting within the week. When we finally get the meeting, the meeting will decide whether to go by the NLC directive or do otherwise. So until now, until we meet, we are still on site on the further notice. Okay, so contrary to what the National Labor Commission has directed, you, you're still, I mean, you, you've explained what it takes to put together a neck meeting, but is that not just a tactic to avoid going back before um, this negotiation begins? Yeah, let me put it on record that we are not negotiating with government. We are just asking for the release of our uh, our tier two pension, which has been in arrest for the past 10 months. Yes, but it is, gov it is government, essentially. It, it, the buck stops at government's doors, right? They have to do certain things to trigger before the finance ministry or whatever can release those, right? Right. Hmm. Come again, my brother. I didn't get you. So I was saying that the buck stops with government still. Whether it's the finance ministry that has to make the releases or whatever, it still ends up in government's, you know, purview, right? That's right. That is right. You are right. Mm. So we are expecting them to release the funds. And uh, this one, I, I think from media houses that we don't need any engagement in government. Though. Is it true that my only me? Yes, that is true. Is it true that it started my my the group pension? That is right. Is it also true that when you deduct the money, you have to put our fund managers. And that is also right. So why are you not releasing the money to the fund managers? You need me to engage me before you pay this money to the fund managers. You don't need me. You know the amount you're supposed to pay. Right. You know that if you force it, I have to pay the state of the money. So why the engagement? So I want to put it on record that this one, we don't need any negotiation. There's no negotiation. 
on this matter. We are not at the table to negotiate. So that went to do well and release the money for our family members for investment. Then we get back to work. So in other words, you're telling me that when you, when you meet with, uh, you know, government, when you meet with the requisite institutions, the NLC, among others, uh, it's not going to be a negotiation. It's, it's a straightforward matter. Pay our tier two or that's it. We, we continue the strike. It's simple as it is, brother. Okay, so there's no room for negotiation. I just want to be clear on that. If we go over our community and read for your better understanding, some people are in the house for the past three years on fences, and they are waiting for the alarm sound. These people are dying. Some are sick. Some cannot even afford three friends meal a day. And you want to negotiate. As a leader, then I'm going to service to my members. I can't negotiate on this. Pay me, and I will put to work. And some people are ABC. So when you go for that meeting on defense, we are not expecting anything less than the payment of our tier two, IRS, and the panel. You have said that you would prioritize the interest of your members and not be rushed into any decision, uh, which also means that this could be a long drawn affair. Do your members intend on staying away for as long as this remains? In other words, until there's an agreement on paying your tier two pensions. Is that to say you will remain on strike? My members are resolute. My members are 100% behind the leadership. And there's no turning back on this side. You are fully aware, Mr. Donko, of the consequences of your actions. I mean, uh, universities, I, I graduated only last Friday. You could tell that there were some uh, things amiss, especially for those first year students. And, and all that, I mean, it's, it's pretty problematic. You, you're fully aware of that. How do you feel about it? My brother, uh, Nigerian man will feel that now who got out. The warning signs were there since last year, I guess. We threatened. Labor Commission called, there were directives. Government disregarded those directives. So, who brought this upon uh, uh, Mother Ghana or the US? How about now? All the university public, uh, uh, all the university uh, hospitals are shut down. The business school are shut down. Now the university administrators are also on. Table uh, is on. Very soon, you start to join. So they should hurry up and do certain things right. Otherwise, the university will be done next. Hmm. And and you have even indicated that you don't even want simple interest. On, on all of this accumulated funds. You want compound interest, which makes it, well, to, to play on words, which compounds the problem for, for government. And, and on that as well, just to clarify, you are not bending. You are not willing to, to bend, to be malleable on that. You want compound interest. If it's simple interest, you are still not going to agree, right? That is right. You want compound interest. That is the position of the pension and you have to respect the laws of the land. I see. It is not me who is saying me, but it is the policy or the laws of the land that is saying that it is demand for uh, compound interest or this offensive interest. Just just a quick one before I, I also uh, get my other you know colleague in or the, the other guest in. Uh, is it is it correct that some of your demands have at least been met? Uh, to some degree, uh, I think the last time you had an interaction, you indicated that some uh, issues surrounding your conditions of, of service had seen some uh, positive developments. Can you walk us through those ones that have at least seen? Yes, they have been some I, headway. Sir Regis and Sir Commission wrote a letter to University Management canceling our overtime allowance. But I uh, have to put it on record that their letter. They've written another letter canceling the earlier one. So our overtime allowance has been restored. They are still in that relationship or in that regard. The overtime, we don't have to run with it again. Our members will be allowed to, to do overtime and they will be paid accordingly. So the overtime issue, we don't have to run with it. But our tier two issue, it is still pending.
Okay. Uh, please hold for me briefly, Mr. Donko. I do know you're driving, but hold for me. I want to come back to you briefly. Uh, Yano Boache Amponsa is a labor consultant. Mr. Boache Amponsa, thank you for joining. Yeah, thank you, too. Good morning. Good morning to you. When you look at all these developments uh, on the labor front, um, we've had conversations, you know, on these in the past. Uh, what do you make of it? Some would say it's an electoral year. We have to get our pound of flesh. Uh, but, but what do you think is accounting for these mass actions in labor? Okay, let me acknowledge your, your, your cherished listeners and then wish to say that um, labor matters normally do not reflect uh, the political season, you know, because these are bread and butter issues. So, uh, when the person is hungry, he won't wait till uh, there's an election in the pathway before he, he decides to take action. Uh, that is why, as a principle, uh, labor matters are, I mean, discussed as and when they occur. You don't allow them to compound before you take action. The moment a complaint is lodged, proactively, you engage and unlock whatever opportunity that is in there. You know, but if you allow these things to linger on for a long time, then they become bigger issues to manage from a psych point of view, okay? So my expectation is that, I mean, those who are in charge of national uh, labor matters would proactively handle labor issues as, as and when they occur. You don't wait till... Uh, it becomes a bigger issue when the workers are saying, now if you don't sort it out, we won't go, we won't go to work before you react. I think that is the problem we have in this country at the moment. What, what would you say the posturing of government has revealed in all of this? I mean, take, for example, the tier two pensions that they speak of. They have been illegally held, but it also wouldn't be the first time that uh, such a situation has arisen. But they say uh, Labour says it wants compound interest, not simple interest on this. How, how would you look at Labour from government's approach and Labour itself? In, in the first place, I, I don't subscribe to, I mean, holding pension funds. You know, because, look, we work today because of tomorrow, all right? Today you have the strength. So even if you are not working, you can move from house to house and get something to eat. But when you don't have the strength, you cannot work again. That is when you rely on these um, uh, pensionable uh, income. But then if you hold them, then it becomes difficult for the person to reliably even calculate what, what, what is due him. So for me, I don't subscribe to that to start with. And secondly, I mean, the issue of uh, the compound interest to me is only a negotiable situation. Uh, that is what the workers want. What can you offer? I don't think that they will stick to what they want when they see genuine, I mean, intentions and approaches to get the matter resolved. Okay, so that one is a negotiable matter. So I don't want to dwell on it too much, but because what they ask for is an indication of the pain that they think they are going through. Uh, if you genuinely demonstrate that you can give something with both sides, because don't forget that when you are negotiating, it's a win-win situation. So if they see that you, you're coming from a very genuine position where some resolution could be achieved, I'm sure they will, both, they will, they will come down. Do you think the requests of labor are justified in, in the sense of not just wanting what uh, they deserve, but the other stipulations, the other things they are asking for? For example, compound interest and, and all of that, especially considering that we are in the grips of an IMF program. Yeah, uh, that's, that's what I said earlier. I mean, if, if the government had done what it had to do, or the employer, I don't know what it has to do. It wouldn't have come today. Now you've created a situation where we need to negotiate. And so I'm saying that, okay, then I'm starting from level five. Because you will certainly come from either zero or level one. Then we judge all and come to a, I mean, a point where we all accept that this is where we have to be. 
So for me, it's only a negotiation ploy. I don't think that they will stick to that uh, throughout the negotiation period. Hmm. Uh, let me come back. Uh, please hold for me, Mr. Boatian Ponsan. Uh, let me come back to Mr. Donko on this, on this beat. Uh, do, you, do you subscribe to what Mr. Amponsa is saying? And moving forward, what can we expect uh, from your, your outfit ahead of Thursday? My brother, I didn't get him well. Uh, so I'm asking, Mr. 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 Amponsan, the labor consultant, he said a few things about your industrial action. I'm asking, do you agree with him, uh, basically? And what can we expect ahead of Thursday from your outfit? Ahead of Thursday, what can we expect? Well, for Thursday, we at the union, we are not expecting anything less than government giving us the money and paying the compound interest. We don't need simple interest. We don't want any negotiation on that interest because the money should have been released earlier for the farm managers to invest the money. So if you want to invest the money for us, then you pay the appropriate interest. So there's no negotiation going into the meeting on Thursday. That is what I can say for now. Hmm. And uh, are you going to be a part of this, this meeting? You are definitely going to be there, right, on Thursday? Yes, I will be there. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Donko, for your time uh, with us this morning. Coming back to you, uh, Mr. Amponsan, so looking at the different dynamics and the different groupings from Teu, uh, now the TUC on another tangent has threatened on the back of VAT on electricity. They say if, if it is not withdrawn, they are also going to embark on some industrial action. When, when you look at all of this, uh, what is your reading? What are your expectations? Ahead of Thursday, first of all, and then with the TUC, whose deadline is also uh, imminent. The government to quickly assemble the, the agreed parties to the table and get all these issues resolved. Because, you know, sometimes these things have uh, other effects on other matters as well. You know, because once one group is there and you've not resolved it, the likelihood is that somebody else may also get up and say that I want my matter which has been lying fallow for so long also resolved. So you resolve the issue and reduce the tension in the system because it is not good for the place of work. And I expect that the government is up to the task. They will quickly get around and get these matters resolved. The issue of the TUC it's not only uh, for the workers. I think it's a, national, it's a national issue. Why? Because everybody buys power. So everybody is interested. So what happens is that other people who are not even workers, but who are affected, could be influencing or talking to the EUC to take a stand uh, that will benefit all of them. And once they have the national support, it is very difficult to have it controlled. But I believe that even before they went there, there should have been a discussion. Some engagement should have taken place. Because don't forget that uh, in January, uh, a new adjusted salary kicked in. Okay? When that salary was being negotiated, VAT was, was not on, on, on electricity. Okay? So you've introduced a, a whole new dynamic to the system which for me is not very fair to the working public. So I think that the government will gather around, quickly resolve the matters, and render the work environment peaceful and working. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Amponsan. Yadon Boachi Amponsan is a labor uh, consultant. Let's bring on now Ambrose Yao Kwejoja, a national chairman of Teo. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining uh, the conversation this morning. Teu is in the middle of all of this, and you have already uh, stated your case. But I just, for the sake of our viewers, um, I'd like you to restate what it is that has got you laying down uh, your tools from tier two uh, to everything in between. Uh, our major issue is the tier two. 
And uh, we, have laid, we have laid down our tools because we are very much apprehensive of uh, our retiring population. People will be going on retirement and have already gone on retirement. So if the tier two, um, a large proportion of the tier two is upheld by government, it is deriving them from benefiting from what is due to them after working for all these years. And uh, do not forget, uh, all our members who are on tier two, they, are, they will receive very low salaries. That is number one. They are not on any other retirement benefit apart from what they themselves have contributed to the scheme. So if government is holding that money from a poor worker, it is very much disheartening. That is why we want to hear something concrete from government. Because we, we have a, a meeting with National Labor Commission. They have appealed to us to actually call off the strike. We have gone back to our constituents to inform them about calling off or suspending the strike. So there are still ongoing discussions among them because they are confused. If we go back to work, will government respect and give us what is due us? So these are the issues bothering us now. So in other words, you are suspicious of government. You, you feel if you were to pick up your tools again, if you were to go back to work, once you did that, once you go to the negotiating table, government will not, will not see eye to eye with you, will not do what you want. We, we, we are not sure what government is going to tell us because, um, my brother, for example, so far what is in our is eight months. Just give us a very good assurance. At the negotiating table, they could have come to tell us that, oh, government is prepared to pay about six months. If that comes to the table, I believe workers are reasonable enough to say that, oh, if six months to be paid, then our workers who have been on retirement for um, all this, especially for last year, because somebody who has been on retirement for the past one year, that person is derived of his accredited retirement benefits for all this month, which is not good enough. That is why we are, we are suspicious and we are not sure what government is going to tell us. So our people, in fact, there is a divided opinion. Others are saying, let us go back. Others say, no, we are dead. And those who are saying no are more than those who are saying, let's go back. So listening to your membership, it means you are not going back until uh, you, you, have, you sit at the table again. Uh, I mean... There, there is an invitation from Minister of Finance on Thursday. Mm. And we, we are hoping that that Thursday something positive will come out because we believe that after all this, the government is putting its necessary working tools together to ensure that they satisfy the working population, especially the retiring population, and especially the amount of back in respect of tier 2 All right. So, um, of course, you have stated why exactly you feel if, if you stop now, um, you may not get the results that you want. But there is also that standpoint. There has been some negotiation with you, uh, all of you, that you should actually pick up your tools again. The National Labor Commission has said that and get back to work in the interim. Why are you not uh, complying with that stance? We are not, I'm not saying we are not complying. What I mean said is that we are going back to our constituents. I believe when you interview us that day, we told you we are leaders. People have sent us to come and listen to what National Labor Commission will say. And then we are going back to them to inform them of the outcome of the meeting. And then they empower us again to do what we are supposed to do. Because we, only, we have the power holding it on behalf of the population. Anyway, uh, do hold for me. Let me bring in Austin Game. He's a labor expert. Uh, Mr. Game, thank you for joining the conversation. Now, if you look at where we've got to, uh, it appears labor is not backing down on this matter. I've posed this question to uh, all those I've engaged on this. Uh, is labor right in laying down its tools? And how do you feel uh, from government's position it has fared. Is it, has government been fair to labor? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
it's, it's most unfortunate that uh, we've gotten to where we have gotten to, even though it's understood that uh, government do not have the money. The point of view here is that this is not normal negotiated collective agreement. If the, we are talking about tier two in particular, this is not the normal collective agreement negotiated item. I formed part of the commission that wrote the pension scheme. And we, we did an actuarial study on how these things would play out uh, for both sides, particularly the working people who be going on retirement. And so here listening to these things makes me nervous because uh, everything then for is thrown out of uh, in a year. And so a lot of uh, honest kind of uh, engagement to be required from the employer uh, to enable them to appreciate what they really are going through and how they will both, both sides will agree uh, for it because uh, asking for an interest, if you like compound interest as they are saying, it, it makes, makes economic sense uh, based upon the Australian study we did at the time. So I think that is very important for you know, the employer to appreciate the dynamics of the concern that working people have, for us to be appealing to the working people, so they find ways and means of how to graduate the payment, you know, uh, uh, terms that they may both agree to. Uh, and they have to keep it. Because the workers also do know that this is the last time of the government, they are unsure whether they are coming back or not. And that's why they are a bit uh, concerned about it. So that's the point. You say it makes economic sense for uh, them to make this request on the, their tier two, but does it make practical financial sense from the standpoint of a government that is in an IMF sponsored program? Once we introduce IMF into the whole discussion, it will create even more uh, problems for, for the employer, government. So if I were to be them, I will not talk about IMS because that is not part of the arrangement from the word go. And so if, the, if something went wrong and it's gone to IMS, fine. But that should not, you know, deprive me from having access to my, my funds. So what they need to do is to agree on a payment plan. And they'll have to stick to it. And, 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 and so that the only way for the employer now is to agree on a payment plan arrangement. And the first tranche of the payment will have to be kept. Will have to be kept. Otherwise, when they, they fail once, that, that forever, they will never accept anything again. You know, for now, I think that we need to appeal to, to, to the workers to, Relax their, uh, you know, anxiety a little bit. Go to the meeting, and the employer must be very honest in laying out. They shouldn't bring IMF issue at all. It's not part of the original negotiation. Yes, so but but, but, but I, I, I just IMF. have to make this point, Mr. Game. You say, and I I mean I understand labor wholly, but I am just looking at the other side. Definitely, they will tell you, though we've got $600 million, we are expecting within this quarter to get over $1 billion from the World Bank, from the African Development Bank, if you put everything together, $1 billion. But a lot of that is also going into specific things. And labor's money uh, may not have been factored in. Uh, and, and I say may here. So shouldn't that be a consideration in going forward with all of this? Or are you just saying that, look, we don't care. Whatever the situation is, give us our money. Is that practical? The language is not that, not to say we don't care. But it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a debt. If you have a debt and it's not part of the haircut, which cannot be part of the haircut, but this is about retirement. It's about 
life long until death do your part kind of arrangement. So you cannot visit such thing on them. Look, this is more serious than anything else. Somebody who is coming out of retirement is vulnerable. And when you are vulnerable, you don't have any kind of uh, uh, pleasure of going to table to talk about things that are not, that's not the way we thought about it when we were writing the pages. I told you I was part of the commission that wrote it. So uh, I'm feeling nervous as I say to you. But that's, that, the, the intent behind it is completely thrown out of, out of the window. And so it's up to the employer to sit well and, and examine the pros and cons and find a payment plan arrangement within the money they have got. If, they, if that's the only money they have got, then they must, they must cater for them in some way. Everything else, which is priority, this is more a priority than anything else. Apart from immediate health concerns for people, the next thing is that people who are vulnerable and cannot be taken for granted. Uh, hold for me, Mr. Game. Let me bring back uh, Mr. Kwejoja. So from where you sit, there are some of your members who are on the cusp, the very verge of retirement. There are, there are some who have already retired and are not getting their benefits, especially for those who have already gone on retirement. How are they making a living? How are they living? Can you share some stories with us? Hello, Mr. Kwejoja. Yes. I'm on the line. You're on the line. I can hear you. Please speak up for me. Okay. So that, that is the major problem labor has now. Because like I mentioned to you, many of our members are the people who do manual work. Whose work demands a lot of uh, sacrifices. So they have sacrificed themselves for a very long time until going on retirement. And then some don't even have a very good world in place. Some of them expect to get that bulk sum to go and make a small place at the rest in. But it is not forthcoming. So they are very much frustrated. Uh, they, 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 are, they are becoming like lifeless, hopeless, and all that you think of. So that is why they call on union leaders that are. When is our money coming? We are dying. Can't we also enjoy the little food of our labor before we go? But my brother, don't forget, it is their 5%. 5% of their earnings that have been put aside. So I don't think government has no any right to be touching that poor person's money. No. Mm. And looking at the TUC, uh, many of you are members. Your bodies are also uh, subunits of the TUC. How yes. would you also react? How does this compound their problem? The proposed VAT on electricity. What is your reaction to that? It's also part of... That, that, you know, government has already done a lot of effort in the system. This imposition of the VAT, it looks like they want to cut off our legs so that we don't exist anymore. We'll be crawling what, now. What did you say? Now, this, this VAT, if they slap it on, it will be like cutting off your legs. Yes, yes. They've cut off our legs. Now they want to cut off our legs. So please, we are telling government to desist from that. As far as the VAT is concerned, they should retain the decision before. Uh, February, uh, before February 1st, yes. Our ultimate is up to tomorrow. So government, once we hear something from government immediately, so that workers will be addressed. And I want to tell you, if it's will interest you to know, this one is not, it's not only working population. Everybody in Ghana is in support of this. And now, it could be the entire nation, not only working. And I believe he yourself speaking to me, you are amount, you are concerned. Because you are paying a fifteen percent of what you are already paying for electricity, which is not good. Hmm. I'm going to put this question to both of you, and uh, from there we can start winding down the conversation. I'll start with you, Mr. Kwejoja. This practice of retaining pension funds of labor, uh, progressively, how are you going to deal with it? Because I think there's some agreement that it must stop. Uh, what is your approach? What is your thinking on that? My thinking is that the government should just go by the lay down law, the law that governs um, retirement benefits. If government goes by that, everything will be okay for all of us. But if you continue to retain that fortune in perpetuity, 
it will not be helpful to a working class and to the government itself. Because now, government is hot in finding the money to pay us. And we are also not going to relent in ensuring that the money is paid to labor. Okay, Ambrose, hold for me. Uh, uh, briefly after this, we'll, we'll, we'll wind down. Mr. Gami, what's your thinking on that? You were one of those who took a look at this, uh, this document, what we have now as the law, which government after government has not stuck to. How do we resolve this bit about not retaining the funds of pensioners? H how do we do it? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. We, we, took, we took notice of the fact that there could be some little bit of delay in transferring money that have been lawfully deducted from the wages of the beneficiaries to be from, I mean, forwarded to the fund managers. We took notice of that during the writing of the pension scheme and said that should they delay more than a certain number of days, they will have to pay interest on the money so that there is no lacuna in the return on the investments as we envisage. So it is not for, for the pleasure of any employer. I'm also an employer. I, I, I have workers. When I withdraw that money, it's the first thing I do because I've told you the most vulnerable people in the world are kids that are born today who are helpless and when people have come of age 70 and above and they are having problems, I guarantee you it is, they are helpless. The word, the word helpless is charitable. So it is not something for an employer to decide what, what, what he or she likes to do. It is mandatory. It's a statutory, right? It's a statutory, you know, provision. And so employers must make provisions for such monies when they are deducted to be forwarded to the farm managers without even thinking and blinking the eye over it. If you don't have the money, engage the people and have a payment plan arrangement as to when and how you retire it with the interest in you know, on it. Anything short of that, I am only speaking from a professional point of view and for somebody who was present and as one of the commissioners that wrote the pension scheme. It, it, it's not negotiable. It's not a negotiable item. It's not a collective agreement based thing. It's statutory. Mr. Gami, any final words? I am appealing to the working people to have empathy. In this case, it's not about sympathy. To have empathy on, on, on the employer and go to table with them. If they have a payment plan for them, let them take a close look at it and accept it and work with it. But continuing to be on strike over it may also be hurting. That's, that's my appeal. Thank you, Mr. Gami. Mr. Kujoja, what will be your final words? Yes, so uh, we are hoping by Thursday we will hear positive words from the government and then take a, a, a very positive step from there. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for joining the conversation. We had Isaac Donko, National Chairman, University Senior Staff Association. Uh, we also had Austin Gami, a labor expert, uh, Mr. Yadom Boachie Amponsan, a labor consultant, and finally, Ambrose Yaokwejoja, National Chairman of uh, TEU. All of them joined this conversation. Well, still to come, Ghana has made significant progress in reducing the burden of malaria over the years. Testing has improved considerably from 38% in 2012 to 97.8% in 2022. The prevalence rate of malaria has also reduced from 27.5% in 2011 to 8.6% in 2022, while death due to malaria has also reduced markedly from 2,799 in 2012 to 151 in 2022. After the break, when we return, we'll be having a conversation on this with a focal person in terms of malaria case management at the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Paul Watting. He is our guest. Do stay.